All right, we'll definitely inform you about the logical conclusion of that very peculiar case. We now want to cross over live to Kisumu for the one and only Willis, the Wardmaster, who is joining us. Willis, a very good evening to you. Um, how are you doing and how is your week? Willis, um, if you can hear me, good evening. Um, how are you doing? All right, um, we'll definitely make sure we establish that connection with Willis the Wordmaster. We can't miss mind your language, of course, always looking forward to learn new words. And I can assure you what Willis has in store for us will definitely benefit those who are inclined to learning the Queen's language or English in a better and proper way. And uh, of course, as usual, we start on the word on the street. And it's a word that is usually used um, uh, to show excessive patriotism and uh, any time from now we'll be joining with our uh, we'll be linking up with willis the one master just to take a look at the words he has in store for us not just word on the street as usual the collections of the week where we take a look at a couple of words that might give you um a, a challenge when it comes to pronouncing them so willis the one master um, i'm sure you can hear me now a very good evening to you how was your uh, day and i'm sure you enjoyed the young ones in studio as well Yes, yeah, I really enjoyed what the young ones were doing, but I have to say sorry because it's like uh, the technical side has been having a small problem. We've had very bad rains here. I don't know whether that is what has really caused all that, but so far, so good. Personally, I'm cool or good if I may use those words for tonight. All right, that's amazing, Willis, and I'm sure the rains are blessings, um, definitely. So let's just yes. get it on the road and take a look at the word on the street as we begin. Chauvinist, chauvinist, chauvinist. Chauvinist, chauvinist, chauvinist. Chauvinist, chauvinist, chauvinist. Chauvinist, chauvinist. 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 Well, it's a tough word, I must say, Willis. It means excessive patriotism. Uh, let's get it from you, Willis. How exactly do we pronounce the word on the street? <laughs> well, just see, this word is a bit tricky because of that digraph CH at the beginning you have to use the sound sh so you say chauvinist chauvinist and the word is commonly used to refer to a man with an aggressive or unreasonable belief that men are more important or intelligent than women and we talk of male chauvinist not chauvinist not chauvinist not chauvinist and remember, when we talk about someone who drives a rich or an important person, you also say a chauffeur, not a chauffeur, not a chauffeur, and all that. You say chauffeur and chauvinist. All right, Willis, over to the next word. Um, making something less tight or less fun, loosen. But my specific question is the S in loosen, loosen. How, how do we exactly pronounce it? Yes, see, that S takes what we call the unvoiced sound s, like an S. s. You say loosen, to loosen. And you can talk of to loosen the nuts, not to loosen. We have that verb lose, that is L-O-S-E, that when you say lose. But L-O-O-S-E, you say lose. Then this verb, which is derived from L-O-O-S-E, you say loosen, not losen. All right, Willis, thank you for that correction. Over to the next word, ovat, which 
All right. Um, overt is the next word. It's a synonym of obvious or noticeable, something done openly, openly rather. Is, is it pronounced that way, overt? It is pronounced exactly the way you've done it, uh, Jesse. But remember, this word has two acceptable or what you may call alternative pronunciations. You can say overt or you can say overt. Overt or overt. All right, Willis. Um, now, to intimidate someone into doing something, uh, browbeat. Now, is it browbeat or browbeat? You know, eyebrow, eyebrow. So is it browbeat or browbeat? We say brow, browbeat. Just like you'd say, the suspect was browbeaten into making false confessions. Browbeaten. So we say browbeat, eyebrows. All right, Willis. Now, um, effervescent is the next word. Is it effervescent or effervescent? Oh, that is a tough one. Just see a long word for that matter. Uh, that is uh, to be excited, enthusiastic, or full of energy. You say effervescent, effervescent. You start with the sound E, which we would call the mid front sound E. Effervescent, not effervescent. Just like when we talk of, or you can use it in a sentence by saying, you can talk of an effervescent member of a dancing group. He talked of an effervescent member of a dancing group. So the pronunciation is effervescent, but a tricky one, Jesse, you can agree with me on that. Yeah, very tricky, Willis. Now, the study of elections and trends in voting. Um, cephology, I presume I got it correctly, hopefully. Oh, it begins with letter P. Yes, that one. Oh, now P is silent, then we have that S pronounced as S. Then the E that follows S is always taking the sound E instead of E. So you say cephology, cephology. And the person, you also say cephologist. Cephology, cephologist. That is it. All right. Now, I request inviting someone to go somewhere. Invitation, invitation. How do you pronounce it? Oh, Jesse, exactly the way you said it at the beginning. That is invitation. Now, the tricky thing is when we talk of the verb, you have invite, to invite somebody. But the noun form, you don't say invitation. You say invitation. Just like we say combine, but we don't come up with a combination. Though it may be used commonly, but it's not accurate. You say combination. Combine, combination. Invite, invitation. Recite, recitation. Not recitation, Jesse. All right, Willis. Um, noted. Duly noted. Now, for a person who is not interested in politics, how do we pronounce this word? Uh, it starts with an A, but I'm sure there's a trick to it. There must be. Is it apolitical, apolitical? Yes, see, many people say apolitical, but that A at the beginning of that word, we have to remember it's a suffix, I mean a prefix. That prefix takes the sounding A. So you say apolitical, apolitical, not apolitical. A political is commonly used locally, but that is inaccurate. You say a political. All right, Willis. Next word, characterized by great generosity. Um, M-U-N-I-F-I-C-I-E-N-T. Munificent, is it? <laughs> Just see, you reminded me about something. There is one time when I was in a vehicle so many years ago, and there is somebody who had just landed in the country from outside and the fellow wanted to use those big words and then there is a conductor who seemingly annoyed him and then he said please you are testing my magnificent my magnificent and you know the way he said it you can guess you are testing my magnificent huh? then i wondered what is this guy talking about 
but that word jesse uh, which means extremely generous or the way you explained accurately in fact you say mew munificent that was a munificent gesture that was you know a gesture a gesture of great generosity munificent jesse okay well it's an uh, interesting story right there now a person's death is it demise demise H how do you pronounce oh, yes. it you say demise demise that is the demise of the superstar the demise not the demise not demise and we have to remember this what is a bit tricky what is very crucial for those who love good english especially accurate pronunciations and in fact i'm talking about careers of serious communication that s takes the voiced sound z like a z and then we have the stress on mice demise so that is the way to go jesse all right thank you for that willis um let's take a look at the feedback you have for us and obviously i'm looking forward to the surprise and yes. confusing <laughs> words as well over to you willis yes i know you know in the first place there is uh, somebody called peter njuguna peter njuguna g of uh, uh, that place is that is naivasha he is uh, sending something which i'll talk about when i finish you know the feedback now frank mitaki of mwanza tanzania you say machination not machination machination machismo machete and macadamia oh you have four words at a time okay you say machination machismo machete and macadamia we find ourselves saying macadamia but it's macadamia benazir shiba if you like sheba uh, morara of rongai faith christian school daddy with d-i-e is just daddy and then with d-y also daddy no difference you say daddy for both just what we call you know alternative spellings so benazir shiba or sheba morara of rongai faith christian school that is the way to go chelsea shuffle of nairobi you say stadium stadium not stadium you say stadium and you can also say stadiums or stadia adams musena also of nairobi you say primary not primary many people find themselves saying primary but the right pronunciation of that word is primary a primary school then you say prejudice prejudice not prejudice caleb otieno osodo and benta a catch of okana area in nyando you say thank and i also say thank you very much for loving katian loving good english keep it up also conceptor chepkuruyo of mombasa you are in the same boat we also love you and appreciate you for loving KTN, especially good English pronunciations that much. Zedi Mwangi of Udhiru, Nairobi, you say warthog. Many people say warthog. Warthog is very common locally, but you say warthog. Now we have Masina full of Kakamega. Deposit and deliver, to deliver. Ahmed Abdallah of Kongowea, Mombasa, you say tenya. Tenya, so and so's tenya. Then lastly, an Mwasia of Makweni, you say debate. Very simple. Debate. Don't try to, you know, make it sound unique. Just say debate. Simple as such. Then we go straight now to the words that we have sometimes to learn even more. That is our surprise word for tonight. You can agree with me, dear viewer, that many people say footers, some even say foetus, but you say fee, fetus. That is a young human or animal before it is born fetus remember you also say phoenix phoenix not phoenix when you are talking about the magic bird in stories then we come to confusing words the upper word when we are talking about a large building for keeping aircraft you say hanga hanga or hanga hanga is also acceptable but Hanga is the most commonly used pronunciation for that large building for keeping aircraft. That is Hanga. Some people may be seeing this word for the first time. That is the upper word. The second one is Hanga. So sometimes you'd find Hanga, the, the upper word, and the second one pronounced the same way. But remember, I told you the upper one, you can also say Hanga. 
So this second one is hanger. That is a piece of wood, plastic or wire for hanging clothes. Then the lower word, when we are talking about the feeling caused by a need to eat, or when we are referring to starvation, you say hunger, hunger, with that sound, uh, hunger, not hunger, huh, hunger. Then finally, I always say when you have a chance to watch Friday Briefing, and that is when we come to this segment that is Mind Your Language, you have a chance also to understand the phonetic symbols that are used in good dictionaries or dictionaries when you are being given that guide on how to pronounce a word. Now, for tonight, I have the triphthong. If you like, you can also say triphthong, and that is aya, aya. In a dictionary or any guide, you'll find these symbols used. Aya, just like in the word fire, you also have haya, you have here, Liar and finally tire. So you can hear me producing the sound aya. The phonetic symbols for it that is under the international phonetic alphabet is right here, and you only get it on KTN Mind Your Language or Friday Briefing. Otherwise, I have to take you back to Nairobi where we have the hot and tough duo of Friday Briefing that is Jesse Rogers and Ashley Mazuri. Back to you, my dear brother and sister. Oh my, thank you Willis. It's always a pleasure to interact with you, get to learn these new words. And of course, I'm looking forward to use them in the course of the week as well. Are you sure? Yes, <laughs> definitely. 